Welcome to Sustain This, a podcast where we discuss mindful consumption, personal style, and the quest for living a more intentional life. I'm Alyssa, a sustainable stylist. And I'm Christina, a shopaholic turned minimalist-ish. And I'm Sina, a color consultant and slow fashion style coach. Together, we will unpack the nuances of what it really means to be a conscious consumer and find more joy in what we have right now. So grab your tea, your coffee, or whatever floats your boat and join us in the conversation. Let's go. Yay. 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 (laughs) Okay, welcome everyone. So we are now in the middle of November and you know what's coming up soon and that is Black Friday. So today we wanted to talk about essentially how to survive Black Friday if you plan on shopping it. If you feel the pressure of the sales, things are going to be showing up in your inbox, on your YouTube feed, on your Instagram feed of all these sales, of all these amazing deals that we just can't miss, can't pass up on. Um, And I do think that there is a way to shop your sales and your Black Friday deals mindfully. So we're going to talk about that in today's episode. So are you guys planning on shopping any Black Friday deals? (laughs) <laughs> great question mm-hmm. i normally don't i yeah, normally me neither. don't yep. um but i do i was actually we were just talking about this i do need to buy a tv i'm normally not a tv person i'm like and i'm like i don't know i don't know tv but i think i do like i just want to like be able to turn it on and veg or like watch a movie on something that is bigger than my laptop mm-hmm. so i do think i would Probably not go in, but like I'll I'll be looking to see if I can get some sort of discount. Like I'll I'll try and take advantage of it, you know, mm-hmm. for that. But that's it. Okay, mm-hmm. that brings me into like a really basically that brings me into kind of like my point of how to shop Black Friday mindfully, yes. and it is to have something in mind. So have your plan, identify your need. And then you can take this time now to start like researching it and flagging Mm -hmm. things for the sale. So you wanted, so you know that you're thinking about getting a TV. Black Friday is a good time to take advantage of a discount. So I think that would really make it a more mindful purchase and less of a frenzied, impulsive, high pressure purchase. Yeah, exactly. I think the whole part about Black Friday and the reason why we tend to overconsume around Black Friday is that sense of urgency and the wording that is used around Black Friday, like as if you will never get a deal like this again or that you'll miss out. Like the whole, like they're really playing on consumer emotion and FOMO. And I think it's really important to take a step back and and the more pragmatic you can be around this, the the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's um I think this is the time to really take emotion out of the equation and just really like step outside of yourself and be like, okay, d- is this something that I actually genuinely even want? Like we could talk about what wants versus needs. I think a lot mm-hmm. of when we're talking about Black Friday shopping, a lot of it may if we're being real, like we all have most of us all really have what we need. If, you know, we're if you have shelter, if you have clothes, if you have food, you know, you're pretty, like our needs are met. So a lot of this shopping and consumption is to satisfy wants, which I don't think is also, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, I think it's good to be able to honor those things, but I think it's, and this, when that frenzy is really kicked up and that pressure of that sale is really on you, I think it's really stepping outside of that and just like, is asking yourself, is this something that I obviously not, is this something that I need, but is this something that I really, truly viscerally want? Mm, Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We're going to be talking more about like, um, like shopping questions and things we ask ourselves in, in a upcoming episode. But I think kind of what you, to your point, Christina, like just checking in with yourself and seeing how, how, how am I feeling before you even buy something? And I think that Mm -hmm. stretches beyond Black Friday, I think, you know, that's something you can use in like a normal shopping situation too, but also just like other like seasonal sales, like yeah. there's so many sales and so many good deals. Um, so I think it's, it doesn't have to like stop with like Black Friday. I think it's something you can use for any, like, especially sales seasons, because as you say, Alyssa, it's something that can really put a lot of pressure on you and it's really playing on like 
emotions and the fear of like missing out of things, missing out on a good on a good deal. Um, yeah. yeah, and I feel like something else that people should be aware of, like Black Friday, is not necessarily a, a big thing in Denmark where I live. Like it is. Definitely, I was just gonna ask. It's, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely become a thing. Like I think it has many many places in the world, but it's mm-hmm. originally from America, right? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like stretched out to other countries. So we d- definitely have it here as well in, in some form. But um, I don't know. It's not something I ever really think about, to be honest. It's not something I feel like I'm, I don't know, if a, if a lot of people like are looking forward to that all through the year or for a long time. It's not, mm. never really mm. something I think about, to be honest. It's uh, Of course, I love a good deal like anybody else, but it's not necessarily something i that's not like a highlight of of my year in, in yeah. terms of shopping it's like if i can get a good deal then then that's nice but it's yeah um but i think it's probably common sense right to double check on prices i don't know how <laughs> like uh how what's the word i'm looking for how experienced you guys are with like Black Friday sales? Are you like really oh, like deep not, into it or? No, not at all. Okay. No. I think it's kind of funny. When I was in high school, I used to work at the Gap in the mall, like local to where we where I lived. And um, that's, so when I was like 15 or 16, that's when I even found out what Black Friday was. And it was like this big, huge deal. And they're like, okay, everyone has to be out on the floor and holding the jeans and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what is what does that even mean? What is Black Friday? I'm like, what are they talking mm, about? Yeah. So I didn't even know what it was. But I also find that, um, I don't know if it's just me, but the deals aren't even that good, mm. especially nowadays. I don't know if it's a more of an American thing. Like I feel, um, so if you guys are watching on YouTube and you're from the States, let me know. Because I feel like the sales in the, the United States are a lot more marked down like they're better sales than at least what we see in Canada like some retailers will have a Black Friday sale and it's like 10% off Mm -hmm. you know like sorry I just I actually just to that point Christina because I have a feel that it's like a thing right that people are not sure if it's a good deal anymore I actually just Mm -hmm. found like a an article from from um, Sky News just to say like you know in and it says just one in seven Black Friday deals are real discounts Love so it. it's oh, not wow. to say that brands are trying to necessarily trick you or that all brands are like trying to trick you or anything, but maybe just like, especially if it's a product that are being sold on several web shops or websites or in several different shops, maybe double check to see, if, is this really a good deal? Like before you mm-hmm. even buy, mm-hmm. um, I think it's, yeah. I think that's actually such an interesting point or that made me think about how when we if we talk about slow fashion or if we look at you know shopping even black friday from a from a slow fashion perspective doing that research beforehand or like watching beforehand like knowing your prices doing your research and i think again that's going to make you that's going to inform your purchase decision on black friday and it kind of always goes back to the message of like shopping mindfully is not an isolated incident incident like it really requires your attention and intention almost every day really so you'll Mm. be so much better prepared to avoid impulse purchases or buyer's remorse or all of those things if you start like Sina said like if you if you know your prices beforehand but that takes time and it takes practice and it takes a mindset to be like okay wait a minute you yeah, know, to to give yourself that pause because we don't we don't give ourselves that pause because our lives are also so busy. Mm. Yeah, I will also say though that even though Black Friday might not be something I generally feel, I don't know, attracted to if that's the right word, but like especially when I look back in like my purchase history before I even got into to slow fashion, I feel like a lot of my style and a lot of my wardrobe was dictated but by what was on sale I feel like whatever whenever I entered a shop it was like I went straight to the sales rail I would never I would almost never look at the new end stuff I would always just have a look at what was on the sale like the sales rails Mm -hmm. in the shop and then that was what was dictating my style and my closet which 
makes absolutely no sense because it made everything feel so incoherent. It was like I had a lot of mm. pieces that would just kind of stand alone and not really, yeah, I wouldn't mm. really know how to wear things together. Um, so yeah, I have definitely been um, quite addicted to sales, especially in the past. Um, yeah. And that's more of like a toxic toxic relationship with with a sale I think yeah because it's the like I think it kind of because I think we talked about this in other episodes maybe the de-influencing one but it's not I feel like when it comes to a sale some of it it's not even about the thing that we buy it's about the like the feeling of accomplishment and like the art of the deal and the and the hunt mm. um yeah and I th- I really feel like the reward that we get when we buy something on sale or that we perceive as getting like a great deal on that I couldn't pass up. And it was, it's the fact that you got this deal and mm-hmm. instead of the actual thing, because, and like, once you have that thing, you know, the novelty wears off and all of that stuff. And then hunting for sales and good deals and for like even thrift sometimes too. Um, you know, it's that the allure I think is that, getting it for as low a price as possible, getting this treasure for, for that good deal. Um, I think that's what we chase. So if, if that's you, if that's kind of what motivates you to shop or that feels more tempting, how, how would you say that someone can navigate that? Because I think as, as we talk about, like you mentioned Sina, the FOMO, right? And I think that's, what we don't want to miss out on. Hmm. I think the list is like super yeah, important. Yeah. Sorry, Sina. Is that what yeah, you were Yeah, no, it's say? totally, yeah. I think if it's something that was already on your list or something that you were already planning to buy or something that you already have, let's say it's like a beauty product or something, mm-hmm. something you already have as like a part of your beauty routine and you were going to buy at some point anyway, then I think it's like, you know, it's always great to save some money. And I think especially if you're on a tight budget, I think a sale is great in those situations. Um, so yeah, the list definitely. Um, and I also think setting a budget to avoid like not overspending would probably be a good idea, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's probably like if I were like approaching Black Friday, which, you know, if I was, I think it's because I buy so many things secondhand. I don't necessarily think mm-hmm. so much about about Black Friday but Mm -hmm. like if I were to you know to do it then that's definitely what I would do and then maybe also again if it's a product that is available on several web shops or websites I would I would definitely make sure to like research the price as well just to make sure that it's it's actually a good deal yeah um yeah, and then there are other there are other initiatives. Like there are a lot of brands, especially slow fashion brands, who do mark like Black Friday, but then they do you know, I don't know, some brands refer to it as Green Friday or they call it something mm-hmm. completely else. And then they yeah. donate a lot of the um, the money they make on that day or like for a, to a good cause or mm-hmm. they highlight a specific, uh, I don't know, ethically made product from their collection or whatever it might be. I think that could also be a solution. Like if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, like trying to support brands and shops that do something good and give something yes. back um yeah absolutely yeah. I think just to to your point about the budget too I think um I think really all, all of this can just kind of comes down to to preparation and I think planning within your budget whether it be your monetary budget or your item budget, like the number of items that I'm going to buy in this sale. I think planning for that and allowing room for impulse buys so that you don't feel catastrophic after where you don't feel like, so it's like, you know, if I have $200 to spend, I have one item that I have planned and I'm going to browse and see if there's something else. And I'm going to maybe give myself the breathing room to get an impulse buy. I'm not going to buy 50 things on impulse, but if I have trouble with impulse buying and I buy one or two and I sort of work that, I price that in and I work that into my plan, then I think that is something to feel good about because it's really when it comes to your mindful spending, intentionality, 
getting a handle on impulse buys, your budget, all of that stuff. It really is about being like 1% better every day or every time rather than this like all or none Mm. kind of mentality, especially if that's something that you struggle with. So I think baking in your purchases, baking in the fact that like there might be something that I hadn't planned for that I'm going to see that I'm going to allow myself to buy um, is I think that's a way that you can still feel good about that if you set like, you know, predetermine those boundaries. Definitely. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Christina, this made me think about the TikTok you shared about, um, what's it called? Girl math. Oh yeah. I think we already (laughs) talked about girl math, but I really like, I really like the, (laughs) the points that you had in that video. I feel like, yeah, if you know, we don't want it to make us like go broke. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. It's not a good deal if it's yes. So it's not a good deal if it, if you're going to go broke for it. So let's always, let's always keep that in mind. There is really no deal that is worth putting yourself into a financial stress for keeping that in mind as well. Um, yeah. It's just not worth your financial health. Yeah. True. Yeah. Or your mental health. Yeah. Yeah. Which like creeps in, right? Like totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. So, mm. Have you ever bought something on black Friday that was like a good black Friday deal or, or just like a, a <laughs> on sale that was like a really good deal i have by accident oh yeah by accident yeah because like i don't like i said like i don't normally shop black friday sales or anything but like i remember what i think it was when i was looking for winter boots actually it was my winter boots last year i was i just happened to be like i need a new pair of winter boots i'm looking i'm researching and i found a really great pair that i loved and they were like black friday pre-sale i was like okay (laughs) Oh my god! Right. Can we just talk about that though? Like, there's the the pre black black pre oh yeah, yeah. Pre- it's ridiculous uh, words. Pre yeah, it's black not Friday. Black it's Friday. It's not one ridiculous. day anymore. It's like an entire month. Uh-uh. Cyber Monday, <laughs> Black Friday week, and yeah, you're right. Like, I think you talked about it earlier. Like the one, the deals aren't even that good, but Mm-mm. um, like, yeah, it's not like you're never gonna see that deal again, you know? Because, yeah. and I find like. So what? Uh, I'm super into the brand. Should I should I make, should I call it out? I don't know. Whoever's editing you this. Can. So I'm like super hot for the brand Tibby this year, and it's a it's a pricey brand. It's expensive. It's luxury quality, all of that stuff. And she has sales in January and June, like the clearance kind of sales. Uh, I don't know if I'm calling out sales. If this is helpful for people who like are like, oh my god, now I gotta like jump on the sale. But mm. I do. I support planning ahead and getting yourself a good deal. But the interesting thing about what I noticed about that, so last year I did a no buy January and that was smack dab in the middle of the Tibby sale. And I was like, oh, I want to buy my first Tibby piece. I'm going to like look at the sale. All these things that I had flagged were on sale. And because I was committed to my no buy, I'm like, okay, I'm not buying this. I have to wait. Mm -hmm. And in February, so I kind of like kept an eye on the pieces that I still knew that I wanted that didn't fade away, that didn't fall off of my wish list because I forgot about them. And in February, they went on even more sale. So it was like the waiting actually turned out to be a benefit. Mm. So I feel like sometimes, um, you know, the things that are on markdown, if they're, if they don't sell, like the retailer needs to get rid of it in some you know, there's a chance that it's going to go further on sale and that that FOMO and that urgency that you feel in that moment of like, oh, this is the best deal I'm ever going to see. I mean, I, even in in my own case in reality, that wasn't true. And there was a benefit to waiting, which I thought was interesting. It's just something to keep in mind if, if there is something that you want that's on sale. Hmm. I don't know. I wonder, I kind of like how Sina and Christina, you're very good at this. So this would be an interesting question. How Sina, you said you used to shop like the price of an item, whether it was on sale or not, was a huge factor in that like determined your consumer behavior. And Christina, you're like the budgeting queen when it comes to like, you know, and, and being so good at like low buys and all that. Like right now, how much does the price of an item factor into your purchase decision 
like is that do you do you guys just like look at an item and be like oh it's too expensive no it's not happening or like wh- how much of a how big of a factor does it play when you shop mm. price I think we've talked about this before I don't necessarily have a, a specific like clothing budget um it's definitely something that I'm still considering um just as also as a way to be able to better control like how much you spend on clothing mm-hmm. but yeah, obviously, it's still really important to me. I, like we talked about in a previous episode, like you don't end up getting like a millionaire by being a slow fashion creator. So price <laughs> is really important to me still. Um, but I would say, yeah, the the piece is more important now, actually. Like it's yeah. not, mm-hmm. I'm not seeking out super luxurious, oh, like very expensive brands already. Like I'm in the lower price point, especially again, since I do purchase quite a lot of things secondhand. And um, if I do buy something from new, then yeah, it, it like compared to, to fast fashion brands, the prices are a little bit higher there, but it's not like super expensive. Um, so yeah, the piece is definitely more important. More I would say important today. than the yeah, price. Yeah, than the price. I think that's like, really good to distinguish yes. yeah i i did a whole youtube video last year on like a, i think it's called 10 things i think about before i buy clothes and mm. it was the 10 things i think about that were not price because mm. when you are shopping i think for most of us um it's the price is the thing that you look at later it's the there's something else that attracts you about the item whether it be like the color the cut the brand whatever it is so those are all the things that I really think about first and then price comes later. And then that's when you start thinking about like, is this worth it? It does it fit in my budget? Uh, if I don't have the money now, how long do I have to save for it? Is this something that I'm happy that I spent the money on? If it is something a high, like something more high end, which I tend to like, you know, like I'm attracted to brands that are expensive. So it's like, whether it be in quality or, the name that you're paying for but that's the reality so is this something that after I buy it after I see the bill on my credit card am I like yep okay cool or do Mm -hmm. I feel bad about that after the fact yeah so I love that I think that's a really great way to approach Black Friday too is like what are the questions maybe we should link that video in the show notes for everyone Mm -hmm. too yeah Yeah, because I do think it's important. I think obviously price is a huge factor. Yeah. But again, I think if you are looking at at your purchases from this slow fashion lens or from the perspective of longevity, then again, you you give yourself a bit more space to not be so tempted by these flash sales Mm -hmm. and by all of the emotional verbiage that's being thrown at you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there are so many tactics too that they add on. Like now a lot of brands will, um, you ever notice like when you're shopping online, it'll say like one in stock, one left yes. when you're looking at it. And I've, I've noticed that too. And I'm like, you know, a week later I come back to the brand and it still says one left or it'll say Oh, I two never left. believe that stuff. I know. So, <laughs> like, what? okay, come on, calm down. Like, please. Yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, so yeah, good. like so it's just a reminder too that there's so many marketing, there's so many tactics and things that are being implemented to enforce that pressure and to to really tamp down on you and make you feel like you like this is it. It's now or never. Mm. So I think it just again it just comes back down to like yeah, as you say Alyssa, giving yourself space. Hmm. I always find it's so funny. I make like a game out of it now. Like yeah. when I look at the headlines or when I look at the marketing where I always go like, it's like, oh, must have, like you will, God, some, it's so dramatic. Yes. Like if you think about it, <laughs> like, like if you actually, yeah. Like if you actually read these sentences, I always go in my, it's like, wait, okay, no, I'm sorry. No, what's important <laughs> to me? Like I'm trying to think. It's like must have deal of the century. It's like, no, no, being alive, I'm pretty sure is my deal of the century. Century yeah. of like my current do you know what I mean like I for have five dollars like, off for five dollars yeah. off <laughs> yeah. no I'm f- thank you like you know what I mean I always try and like spit it I just I just roll my eyes mm-hmm. and I give it a little laugh before because yeah. you kind of have to otherwise you can get sucked in that mm-hmm. sense of urgency that sense of belonging yeah. and I think competitive consumption is is a real thing and I think it is a big piece of what drives 
overconsumption, no matter sort of what your beliefs and values are. I think we all want, we all want to belong. We all want to feel whatever, like, you know, so I don't know. Good yeah. eye rolls. Yeah. <laughs> Some good eye rolls in there. That makes me also think of, um, just as a thought. So like, I don't think Black Friday is all bad in, you know, like when I think of Black Friday, I think what comes to mind is like people crowding at, you know, the electronics. Yeah. And like trampling each other and fighting each other over a TV. But I think um, the other thing too, as, as you say, Alyssa, Alyssa, within shopping within your values, like maybe you use this as an opportunity to support small businesses or like, Mm -hmm. you know, go and support your local brands and your community that are having Black Friday sales, uh, things like that. Like Mm. for example, we love to support our local coffee shop and on Black Friday, they have like a deal on coffee. So then, you know, I'm going to go support on that day kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's so, a, good, a good idea, good approach. So I think there are ways to feel good about shopping it if you are planning to. And if not, you know, yeah. I hope we touched on some great strategies to abstain from it too, if that's yeah. if that's your plan. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think that's like a good last point too, just to bring in like if we think of – businesses who do take a more slow fashion, sustainable, ethical, whatever word you want to use Mm -hmm. approach is we have to remember that they can't compete on price. They just, they cannot. Mm -hmm. So they are busy trying to come up with creative ways to still play in this world because they have to. So like to Christina's point, which I thought was like excellent. And Sina, you mentioned this too at the beginning is like, if you do have to spend maybe and you and you do want to participate then do it there mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so let yeah. us know are you shopping black friday are you staying away from it what's your plan and how do you shop a deal mindfully let us know in the comments if you're watching on youtube and if you're listening on apple spotify wherever you get your podcast don't forget to rate us and thank you so much for listening we love you Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for joining in our conversation this week. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and Apple and leave us a rating and review. It's one of the best ways to support the Sustain This podcast at zero cost to you. We're also a community-led podcast. So if you have any questions for us, topic requests, or even guests you want to hear from, please send us a DM on Instagram at sustain this underscore podcast. We read all of our comments and look forward to hearing from you. We hope you join us again next Tuesday where we'll talk about so much more than clothes. Ciao.